you welcome back to the chat right here on uh, CTTV. My name is Akko Kumsi. You can find me everywhere at PK underscore Kumsi. Kumsi spelled with a double N. Like I say every time, this is a very, very lively show. Where we just come here to have conversations, educative conversations, something to inform you. And then also we look at music videos. We also get to sip us of cocktails. You know, we're just here to have fun. And uh, today I have two very interesting, I like the way you're smiling, but, uh, <laughs> I have two very interesting um, gentlemen here with me. We'll be looking at the, a few conversations that has been going on. You know, Ghanaian artists are doing very well out there. So we have a conversation about Ghanaian events outside of Ghana. I mean, how are they faring? What are the notions that we need to cut out? What are the expectations that we need to manage? And all of that. But before we go into that, you know, we have the music video segment where we look at uh, two music videos that have been making their airwaves for some time now uh, but before we check out the video i'd like to introduce to you my two awesome awesome guests right here in the studio with me on my extreme left i have the one the only dj of the landlord himself sarkodier DJ Mesa. How are you doing, DJ Mesa? Not bad at all. Yourself? You're not bad at all? Nah. Oh, man. Nice weather tonight. What? So it's, it's a nice weather. Good nice weather. weather. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Because it rained a it bit. Rained a bit yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you like the rain or you like the sun? I like the rain. You like the rain instead? Yeah. Okay, so that means you like the cold. A little bit more. A little bit <laughs> more. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here with us, Abid. I hope everything is going on well with Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Yes. What are you playing your next big gig? Um... I think it's in August. It's in August. But I don't have the full details. Yet. You don't have the full details. All right. I'll be following that, by the way. <laughs> and then also we have right here in the studio also Nabil. Yes, sir. How are you doing, Nabil? I'm fine, thank you. Are you sure? Yes, I'm fine. Is the weather also perfect yeah, for I you? Like, I like it like this. You like it like yeah. this, eh? Oh, okay. Chilled I mean, but not chilled. Chilled yeah. but not chilled. Yeah. I mean, the heat is too much. So when the, weather, when the rains come like that, everybody is relaxed yeah. and fine. All right. And when is your next big event? Because you're also into events, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So when is your next big event? I'm waiting for my boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's how it is right here in the studio. I mean, we're just here to have a good time, have conversations, vibe, make, I mean, make connections and also build relationships. But let's check out these two music videos that we have um, for you. And then when we come back, I'll introduce our next guest or our final guest who is all the way in the UK. But before I introduce him to you, Let's check out these two music videos. Number one, from King Paluta. I mean, actually, uh, arguably the hottest right now in the, in the music industry. And he has this song, Asida. We are super excited. I'm super excited to see the video. So, guys, or well, ladies and gentlemen, let's check out the video. Sam, you will not believe who we have here. The man of the moment, King Paluta. Hey. The song Asida has been topping all the charts on all music platforms. Yeah. How does that make you feel? <laughs> We didn't even know they asked for that.
Welcome back to the right here on a city TV. And I mean, I'm super excited for this young chap, man. Like Kim Paluta, salute to you. We love this song so much. And actually, you've been around for a very, very long time. So, Charlie, kudos to you. And also, the video is, is doing very, very well. And I'm, I'm super excited about it. But before I go around um, the studio and engage my guests, I promised you that I'm going to introduce the final guest for today to you when we come back from the music video and I'm so glad and honored to have Mr. Dennis Terrier right here with our CEO of Aquaba UK. He's joining us via Zoom and I, when I say Aquaba UK, you know where I'm going, right? So he's joining us via Zoom all the way in the UK. How are you doing, Dennis? I'm good. What about you guys? Uh, we are doing fine. I have in the studio uh, Nabil Alassan and also DJ Mensah who are also very, very big in the event space. So it's good to have you all. I mean, how are you? How is the UK treating you right now? Is it hot? Is it cold? How's it going? We just had the hottest day today, so it's a perfect time for you calling me. So, um, yeah, we're just moving into summer already. Okay. So, yeah, that's good. It's good. Ah, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. So, I mean, you're warming yourself for the summer. But you know most people do not like the summer. A lot of people like it hot, a cold. So... Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be hot. Sir. It's gonna be hot. I mean, when well, you know the heat that's going on right now in Ghana, a lot of people will not be happy with you when you talk about hot. But anyways, welcome to the yes. chat. I mean, we're going to be talking a lot about events. But we just watched um, Kim Palutes Asida music video, and uh, mm. I don't know how you guys uh, feel about it. Uh, let me start with you, uh, DJ Mensa, because uh, you've been very, very neck deep into music and everything how do you find this one um i'm very happy for Kim Paluta. he's been around for a long time and this is what we want for our artists um uh, it's uh, I, I keep saying that we should give them more time mm. we should give them promotion we should promote i mean yeah. if you have any chance let's give this new artist chance i mean i'll call him new artist as much as he's been around for like a long time so just imagine a very talented artist that have been there for like a long time mm -hmm. one song I've just put him out. Yeah. His other uh, projects are also going to, I mean, if you listen to this one, you want to go and listen to the other ones. I mean, the other things. So don't stop. I mean, mm. I keep saying, don't stop. Keep pushing. You never know when you're going to shine. Mm. Mm. That's really, really good. And today also, I mean, right here in the studio, we also have some cocktails for you guys and brew services. I mean, this guy sells the finest cocktails. And today's cocktail is named after Kofi Jama's uh, Womboom Steez. Okay. Yeah, his newest song. So, I mean, Bruce Services is going to give us some nice cocktails. Thank I mean, you. Sorry, uh, Dennis. <laughs> Dennis. Uh, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> I'll, I'll, have, I'll have Dennis. I'll, I'll have his. You, know. you he's, have Dennis. He's, he's my partner, you know, just to put it out there. So when it comes to Aquaba UK, you know, we have events in Ghana. So yeah. Dennis is my partner. I have to put it out there. Oh, okay. I'm sure you didn't know that. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't know that. Okay. But hey, yes. good to know. I mean, we learn every day. So, so Dennis. So it's, it's fine. I can have this. You know. Okay. Yeah. Are you, do you agree that we give your cocktail to we'll DJ share, Mesa? We'll share. <laughs> Or they should share. Look at her, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. That's good. Um, Nabil, uh, your yeah. take on this? Uh, I, I, I think we should, as Mesa said, we should give the new guys a chance. There are a lot of talents in the system, a lot. And um, l let me track back a little bit to um, this guy, uh, this slim guy. What's his name? Uh, Black Sherry. Black, Black Sherry. Black yeah. Sherry. Yeah. You know, it, we, ha we have a lot of untapped talent. But if, if we go back, if we give the chance for people to exhibit their talent, I'm sure 
we're going to unearth a lot of them. Mm. It's, it's, you know, we have the social media now, and it's easy for you to see these talents. Mm. But we should be able to also have certain mechanisms that are going to get these guys and put them on a bigger scale. Mm. But without that, I'm not sure we're going to do anything better. But we, we, we should be, we should make it, uh, I don't know how to say, we should make it a priority. A priority, yeah. yeah. Because now Nigerians are selling the, the entertainment space. Yeah. Music, movies, whatever it is. Podcast even. We are not deliberate about yeah. it. So we should be deliberate about it. The ones that are already in the system, we push them. Then the younger ones who will come and take over too. We, we make it a deliberate effort to groom more mm. younger ones mm. so that those that are going will go and the, the younger ones will come and take over. All right, all right, all right. That's good. Uh, Dennis, I mean, your take on this one, uh, Kim Paluta with Asida. Beautiful video. I don't know what you think about it. Um, I personally love it. Um, I would say from here in the diaspora, um, just recently, we've had two massive concerts, and um, when his music was played in the auditorium, yeah, it was it was vibing. Um, it, it, it got it got it got the people going, and mm -hmm. when I say the people, it got the Ghanaian community going. Um, but now the question will be, would he be able to get to the global audience? Mm. Um, the Ghanaian community has never been the problem. You know, it's how we you know, we'll move the next step forward and get to the global audience. All right. So for me, um, excellent music. I love it. Um, I love the crowd response um, to what, when they were playing it, just, just in the auditorium. Um, but now we now have to focus on how to break that international or global, I should say. How are we going to get it there? All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, and then this is what I'll put you on the spot. Do you have plans of bringing yeah. for quite um, a Ghana party in the park? Do we have who? Do you have plans of bringing you for Ghana Party in the pack? Um, I think you've just about done the breaking news yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> well done, well done. Um, yes, it's, it's one of our uh, artists that we want to bring for Ghana Party in the pack. There's a discussion going on. Okay. And to be honest with you, um, we feel that this year we are going to promote a lot of the new artists mm. coming through. Mm. Mm. I believe the book I uh, last made, um, quite a few of the guys. You know, um, I looked at it, it's in 2017 or 2018, DJ Mensah will be able to tell me. Yeah. Uh, we managed to break through with Kiri, Kwame Yuji, and uh, Kim Promise. We called them the 3Ks. We brought yeah, them here to the United Kingdom. Yes. And um, now look look at where we are. Mm -hmm. But we need more coming through. Nabil also said it. You know, we need to be prepared to bring more of these guys through. And I feel like um, we're not doing enough for them. Mm -hmm. We are not doing enough. But we, as a Kwaba and Ghana Pass in the park, are prepared to take that gamble this year. Same way we did with Kili Kwame Eugene and uh, Kim Promise a few years ago, to say, look, there's three or four good new artists out there, Paluto included, Olive the Boy. We're going to make them head right there. We're going to party in the park this year. Mm. Why not? If we don't promote it, who's going to promote it for us? True, true, true. All right, thank you very much, um, Dennis, right then. I mean, you heard it here first. So, Kim Paluta. It's going to be a Ghana party in the park. Olive the boy last minute. All these young chaps are going to represent in Ghana at the Ghana party in the park this year. So thank you very much, Dennis. But we'll be jumping straight into our main conversation for today. And it's talking about the success of Ghanaian events away from home. I mean, what are the things that we need to do? Um, the expectations that we need to manage from most of these funds out there. The comparison between Ghana and Nigeria. What is that Nigeria is doing well that we can copy or replicate? And then, I mean, do we necessarily need to sell out certain venues before we can call ourselves, or before we can call ourselves established um, artists right here in Ghana? And to start off this conversation with us, I'll go with you, Nabil, because you are into event organization in Ghana, um, I mean, right here in Ghana. Now, I just want to know from your perspective, when an artist comes to you, yeah to say, oh, I want to organize an event. To you, as an uh, event organizer, what goes through your mind when an artist approaches you with something like this? Uh, if an artist comes to me and says he wants to do an event, what I look out for is the end product. The what end do product. you want to see? Okay. Where do you want to do it? Mm -hmm. So the venue will determine what concept and all that, that okay. I'm going to bring out for you. And also, how many people are you expecting? Mm -hmm. 
crowds really doesn't do it for me. You can have a very small crowd, mm -hmm. but very intimate crowd where you 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 can send your message across. Wow! You so for you, the success is not necessarily, not necessarily about the crowd. About the crowd. Yeah. Sometimes it's about the crowd. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Sometimes it's about the it's crowd. about the crowd. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's also not about the crowd. Okay. So yes. let me explain it to you. Go ahead. You see, sometimes you have certain key people in the room, like DJs, like music lovers, mm -hmm. like all these guys. And when you are able to impress, mm -hmm. these are the same guys who are going to take you to the broader uh, audience. audience. Okay. Now, let's say you are playing to this kind of people, like 2,000 people. All these 2,000 people, they have a voice. Mm -hmm. They have the platforms. Yeah. They have the channels to put your music mm -hmm. out there. So imagine that all these 2,000 people, like maybe Mensa has maybe 300,000 followers. This person has 1 million followers. So if you come outside, you have a, a bigger platform. But now you can play a show which is about 30,000 mm -hmm. people. And the place is full. Yeah. But they don't no stream your music. They, okay. they don't do any. They just come to the show and come and enjoy. Mm -hmm. you, you don't benefit anything out of that. Mm -hmm. But you see, they will also come to your, your um, event, event mm -hmm. based on what they've heard. Mm -hmm. So the key people in terms of music promoters mm -hmm. and the DJs and all that, they are the key people that you, you really need. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when an artist comes, and you, 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 the event organizer, cannot give the artist the kind of things that he wants to see. Okay. He should tell you that. So he should come with his vision. Correct. He should come with a vision and mm -hmm. say, this is what I want to see. This is how I want to get to the audience. Mm -hmm. Because all that will come into the production. Mm -hmm. So that you, the event organizer, can draft your uh, arrow, like the running order, to suit the event what itself. Is. Okay. Because you, you can come on, on the show and just come and jump, jump around and that's it. But there should be some form of impact for people to understand the kind of event you are doing. Mm. So let me say, let, if you take like Rapaholic, for instance. Yes. You won't come to Rapaholic and go back the same. Yeah, I agree you with you. You get me? Yes. Why? Uh, I mean, because the experience. Correct. I feel like Sakura is very, very big, and DJ Mesa can bear me with us, but Sakura is very big on experience. Because yes. I've been at a, at a concert where he was like, okay, if you guys cannot afford this uh, light or this fire things, I'm going to bring it myself, to yeah. add on to it, yeah. to give me the effect yeah, I want. Yes. So Rapalik is mostly about the experience. So as I said, it's the art, what the artist wants to see. Mm -hmm. That's what he wants to see, to, to ginger him to be able to give the performance that he wants to give the mm -hmm. people. So most often, it all bows down to the artist. Bows down we to the, the artist. So if I am going to get the artist, mm -hmm. then I know what I have seen that I want to do with the artist. artist. Okay. So as an event organizer, if I want to use this Mensa as an artist, mm -hmm. who, he is an artist. So yeah. let's say if I want to use him as a, at a concert, I know what he can do. Mm. So if I, I've already thought about it and know that, okay, if I place you here, and maybe you play old school from... 7.30 to 8, and maybe from 8 you play uh, maybe the high life, mm -hmm. and from this time you play this time. It's going to work for me. Mm -hmm. Then I book him. Mm -hmm. and, and I know the target audience that I, I'm going to mm -hmm. play this thing mm -hmm. to. Uh -huh. But there are some people also that uh, there is nothing you can do. There are some we artists that there is nothing you we can be do. Yeah, we have to be All right, all right. You right. understand? Thank you very much, Dabu. Yeah. Now, um, Dennis, if I'll come to you, you uh, have been organizing events for like the longest time. I, I watched your episode with uh, Caleb Kuda on Beyond Borders. And by the way, it's on YouTube. You can know how Dennis started this whole thing called Akwaba UK, Ghana Party in the Park, and how successful it has been over time. So you can check it out on YouTube. Now, what are the main challenges when it comes to organizing events? outside of Ghana for Ghanaians? Oh, um, it's a hard question, but um, the best way I'll say it is, is basically investment, okay? Investment, okay. You need, yeah, in, investment is key. We, in investment, sponsorship, um, 
we are not lucky enough here in the diaspora because our community is not as big as um, other communities. Mm -hmm. So we don't play a major part when it comes to the big corporate companies looking at a Ghanaian community. How much is the Ghanaian community contributing towards to the, to you know, to to a company? Let's just say a company like Coca Cola. Mm -hmm. You know, the numbers are not that great. So for us, investment has always been a challenge. Uh, getting an artist over here you just have to look at the artists and mm -hmm. the amount of people is going to draw mm. okay yeah and um, you, that's that's the way to do it is is difficult for us because now you may, as you mentioned earlier on the nigerians and the other and i'll say that my piano guys are doing very well okay reason being reason being it's also the perfect timing they had investments came in at the right time mm -hmm. Um, African music was more acceptable, mm -hmm. it was fashionable. And don't forget, we've been driving this. The contribution that we've been making towards African music started a long time ago, mm. you know. Uh, and um, I, now I hear people talking about O2, O2, you know, even before the West Kid, the Banner Boys going to O2. Let's not forget Papa Wemba, um, uh, Yusuf Ndor, yeah. uh, Premier Gawu, Awilo. They've all been to O2. The O2 Arena. Just at the time, we, yes. It's just wow. at the time we didn't have the yes we didn't have the so-called media to to broadcast it out there mm. we but didn't even have social media at the time yeah we didn't have social media yeah when i started promotion there was nothing like there was nothing like a mobile phone forget about telephone you know it's word, word of mouth you mm. know going around streets going around streets going around tube station going around various places just giving out leaflets so now we're in as everybody said we're in the digital world now yeah and now the advantage we've got is that, at the, you know, at a click of a button, anywhere, whether you're in New Zealand, you're in Australia, whether you're in um, Temale, mm. you're in uh, Ada, mm. you should be able to assess any artist or any show. Mm. The timing for Afrobeat, so I'll say, I'm going to just use African music, yeah. right, within the last, uh, let's say, 10 years or so, mm. it's been perfect because now the people that didn't believe in African music are now believing in African music and they're investing into it. Who were you back in the day? Hmm. African music. No. We were not even allowed to play that in, in, in the nightclub. Wow. I remember playing on, I remember playing on African music in a nightclub in the West End. Mm -hmm. And the manager came and gave me the sign. Wow. Yeah, because we, yes, because we played African music. That's not what they wanted. But we kept on. We kept on, you know, making Pushing. people believe that it's fashionable. Okay. We made people believe that it's fashionable. Mm -hmm. So now... If you look at the artists that we've got, how do we promote them here? It's based on their numbers. There's some artists that you bring them here, you get numbers. Some artists that you touch them, you're looking to get bankrupt. You know, wow. when medical, yeah, when medical and his team approached me to do uh, Indigo O2, yeah. I was like, had my doubts. But then something struck me to say, look, with the right investment, with the right promotion, mm -hmm. we could do it. And let me say, medical's concept Although it's sold out, I'll say it's hundred percent Ghanaian investment, wow, hundred percent Ghanaian promotion, and also hundred percent Ghanaian um, production of the day. So wow. it tells you that's why I use the word investment. Mm -hmm. If the investment is there, mm -hmm. it could be done. And All when right. medical did say, Look, we've got the investment, we want to do this, you see the end result. Yeah, because so I know the investment investment plays a major part and whatever you want to do here in the diaspora. I'm right. sure the same in Ghana, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But you have more mileage in terms of you have good sponsors. Yeah. You know, some of the sponsors that I can mention, the MT and the Vodafone, they've supported Ghana music, excellent. And we should also like be thankful to what they've done. Yeah. But when you come here in the diaspora, it's a private investor's own money pushing to this event. So when we get investors on board, we could do magic. Wow, wow, wow. I'll yes. be coming back and, to you. And that, and that comes to what I was saying earlier. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, the, the success of Afrobeat, mm. it's down to investment. Now they believe in it. Wow. So All yeah. right. I'll be coming back to you on a very key question that I have in mind. But DJ Menda, you okay. being um, somebody who creates taste because you're a DJ and you understand the terrain of some of these things, um, how far our music has traveled, you know, how much accepted it is out there. Do you think the taste of music or how good our music is contributes to how successful an event is outside of Ghana? It does. I mean, I'll, I'll say it contributes to a percentage. To a percentage, okay. Yeah. I mean, um, first it will be about the music mm -hmm. and then the investment that Dennis spoke about. I mean, as the conversation we were having before, yeah. you can have a good song, 
like we were talking about uh, Kim Paluta. Yeah. He's been around for some time. But the right investment, if we had the right, now the music, the systems are even blocking everything when it comes to social media. If you're not paying, you're not getting played. If you're playing, I cannot go on maybe Instagram Live and DJ for five minutes. It stopped because somebody has to get paid for. So now the systems are blocking it. So it's a full-time business now. Mm -hmm. um, one or two songs have gotten in, into the system or worldwide from Ghana. I would say we we're lucky with that. But how many times can we do that? You know, so we need the right investment because when people are spending over 300000 or 500000 on on just a single track, mm. just to make sure that it's getting played, mm. it, you know, the billboards around the world, who is even listening to you and everything. People so are spending how much on a single track? About 500000 on a single track. 500 what? Thousand dollars. Dollars yes. on a single track? Yes, yeah. on a single track. You know. To be played where? Again, where are your people? What's, what's your analytical showing you? Who, are, who is listening to you? Where do you have to promote your songs and everything? So again, if, if you have a good song and you don't, now you have a very good song and you don't have the investment, you're going to sleep on your song. Wow. Yep. Wow. You're definitely wow. going to sleep on your song. So wow. yes, we need the good songs. Mm -hmm. um, I've touched it a few times where I've said that we need to go back to the studios talking about the producers. And, and then give competition to whatever uh, is going on. What mm -hmm. people know as Afrobeat right now, mm -hmm. uh, the producers can be versatile about that. The artists also have to look at the way direction or the direction that people are now to also focus on. And then when you get all this thing cooked, it's like you're cooking, you take your time, you don't pour all Everything of it together. It. So you, you get the producers giving you top beats, you get the artists bringing their A game, you have the marketing and, and investment right, your song is going to get there. The song is going to get there. Yeah. All right. Uh, Nabil, you being an event organizer and everything, yeah. now when you look at an artist from your perspective, is it mandatory or is it necessary for an artist to actually organize an event and say, okay, this is... Uh, a cocoon live in let's say tardy before I'll be able to say, Oh, me too are rich. Because, like we we're saying, you should consider your fan base, you should consider how good your song is. So, is it mandatory for an artist to organize an event to be able to consider themselves, ah, me too, I'm successful in this industry? Uh, it depends on the demography, okay? So, where you are coming from. Mm -hmm. So, let me use an example like um, uh, Kofi Kinata. Mm. Kofi Kinata comes from Takrade. Mm -hmm. So if he's coming from Takrade and he's been able to break through the system, he should be able to do a concert in his town mm -hmm. to give back to the people. Yeah. Uh, Sakwadi is doing something for Accra Atema. Mm. Uh, Samini is doing his. But you see, it is not everybody or all the artists that will be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Because one, apart from the demography, you look at how much you are bringing in, your budget, sponsorship, um, like venues mm -hmm. and all that. You can't just wake up just because you have one or two hit songs, so mm -hmm. you want to do a show. a show. You end up singing other people's songs and come and sing your three songs and that's it. You understand? I get you. You should be able to have a rep that is going to say, okay, if I start my songs, how many people know, like, all my all songs? All my songs. Yes. Right. And you, you should have about 10 to 20 songs to be able to 10 to 20 song. hit songs? Hit songs. Wow. Yeah. So you cannot just say, because I have two hit songs, so I want to do a concert. Mm. And mind you, uh, Sakodia is the first artist mm -hmm. to start his own concert in Ghana. Really? Yes. First okay. young artist. Okay. Amachi and all those things. And the Kujoy yes. trees and yes. all that, yeah. But the first young artist, artist. Wow. to start his own show in Ghana is Sarkodie. Mm. Mm. So he, when, when we decided to do Sarkodie, the hype was there. Mm -hmm. He had about, I think, I, how, how many songs? Like, it wasn't up to it, 10. It wasn't up to 10. So how was he able to also do it? Okay. Then? So at the time, the, 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 the way that whole event came up, it, it, was, it was a miracle. Mm -hmm. So Baby was out, other songs were out, but Rapaholic was coming. And Rapaholic was the album he was launching. Mm -hmm. 
So it was a platform that we, we thought that he could showcase to the people at the time. Mm -hmm. And it worked. Mm -hmm. And if you look at that, at that time, no, no, there were hip lifers around. But nobody had done their own concert at the time. Mm. But it was a risk that we took. Mm. And it, 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 it worked. worked. It yeah. Worked. All right. Thank you very much, Nabil. Now, Dennis, can you tell us a bit about the demographics when it comes to organizing events in, um, say, specifically case study the UK? Because you realize that we've had a good number of people organizing events. But it looks like when Daddy Lumba comes around, it's a sold out show. When a rapper, you know, comes around, and I'm talking about Sako here, just recently with medical, it's a sold out show. Uh, we've also had Shatawale, it's a sold out show. So, can you tell us, give us, paint a picture of the demographics? Probably there's a young act sitting, I mean, home somewhere who is saying, oh, okay, I want to go to UK and go organize an event. What are the demographics like? So, it will inform people to know a lot more about it. And then after that, I'll come to you about this whole. O2 thing. I feel like that's where we're going to wrap it up. Okay. I mean, the whole O2 agenda and everything. I mean, Nabil and Vincent mentioned, first of all, the artist needs to have bangers, okay? Um, it, that's a trade away for, for me as a promoter to be interested in an artist to promote them. They've got to have bangers. You know, there's no point in coming all of the way here and come and perform one song and the people are looking at you. One of the biggest challenges we face, which um, I'll say to a lot of artists, um, one music alone is not good enough mm. at, at present. Reason yeah. being, you need to get a traveling documentation, you need to get visas. So sometimes they look at it and thinking, oh wow, this guy doesn't have you know, a serious EP or a serious album. Mm. Why, you know, he's gonna come all the way to London to perform just that one song. Oh. There are global hits whereby you know, you know, globally one song could come out and you know, let's just say Michael Dapa, a man is hot. That's yeah. slightly different. But you have artists coming from Africa, who maybe has got one hit within the African region, and nobody knows that song. So one, you go and apply for a labor marketing for them, you go and apply for the visa, and you find out that the artist wouldn't get it. All of these things count because they're not what you say, they're not meeting that criteria. And then it's a job application you're going for. The job application is you want to come to the United Kingdom to perform and to be paid. So the person who is assessing your document will also look at it, oh, this guy's only got one hit. So those are some of the challenges we face. Now, you mentioned Sark, you mentioned Shata, you mentioned mm. Daddy Lumba. Come on, countless and countless of hits. Mm. You know, you, you, the minute you go on um, YouTube or anywhere, you search, whoever is assessing them will see, oh, wow, this guy's got quite a lot of hits. Mm. So that's where it starts from. It's, it's hit music. That is what we look at, you know. And the people here in the diaspora, we, we cry for an artist to come who could perform for more than at least one hour. Mm. Not an artist that will come and perform and then just repeat the same song and as Nabil said, even perform, perform other people's song. So that's a challenge in itself. It's a big challenge. Um, we need artists having more hits. And I have said this before, in Ghana, we have more artists that has only one hit than artists that have oh. mega, mega, mega hits. Oh. If, you look, if you look at the numbers, you know, we, we happy, you know, come up with one hit, it's like I've made it. No, let's push ourselves. If you look at the number of artists that have one hit, it's quite a lot. Mm. We need to change that. We need wow. to change that narrative. Encourage the artists. Mm. Do more. You know, get our DJs. Our DJs play the major part. Get the DJs to be playing your music. You know, sometimes we forget about the DJs, but I've seen that DJs playing our music, and the Ghanaian DJs especially, yeah. goes a long way. Because people, people all around the world are listening to what the DJs are playing. They listen to what radio station DJs are playing everywhere. So at the end of the day, we, we just need more hits. So if you come up with a hit right now, and it's banging, and I know there was a hit last year, that was my, this year, you know, here and again, mm. what happens? And the same artist hasn't done another, another, another follow-up to it. Mm. Whereby if you look at our competitors, you know, straight away, after six months, there's an extra following, you know? Wow, yeah. There's, the, 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 there's a chain of flow of, of, of music coming out. We have got the artists, we have got the talents in Ghana, mm. but we just need to do that little bit more, that mm. little bit more push. Mm. You know, just not rely on just one hit song and that's it. You All know, right. then it becomes hand to mouth, hand to mouth. No, let's get two, three, four songs out there. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's look at what Kim Promise is doing right now. Yeah. It's, it's the perfect example. Bangers, man. Bangers after bangers yeah. after bangers. Yes. Terminator is a banger, Paris is a banger. It looks like you need to be releasing the, the bangers the back to back. On. Yeah. 
All so right. that's just just this encouragement to all the young up and coming artists. Listen, mm -hmm. get get us more music and believe me. All right. And now, yeah. uh, Mesa, what is it with this massive obsession with selling out the O2 for Ghanaian artists? So it makes you feel like there will be a piano you need. So until you sold the you sold out the O2, the yay. But I mean, see these people selling out their indigo at the O2. I mean, it's not it's not a small space for you to say, oh, okay. I mean, he just did. What is it with this whole obsession about the O2? I mean, if if you if you go on my Twitter, I, it's something that I, I mean, said. I've, I've yeah. seen the, the uh, rage. Uh, uh, it's become like the benchmark for artists, yeah. you know, from Ghana right now, which I don't think that is fair. Uh, I think we are putting too much pressure on Ghanaian artists. Um, look at what Medical have done. Where is the growth of an artist? You know, first releasing a, a song, trying to gather his local audience, and growing from there to the international front. You cannot just get up from there, uh, 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 from from somewhere. Uh, where's the medical from? So to and yeah. go all the way to sell the arena. You have to. There's there's a process that you you go through. Mm. It's like going to class one, class two, class three. That's it. So you first of all gather your audience from the ground. You test your market outside. You, you first of all even have to check where your audience are. Mm. You, when you, again, if you check your analysis, analytics, and you know that your your fan base is in America and not in the UK, why are you even going to the UK is not the, I mean, O2 is not place. even the only auditorium mm. that we can boast of. Where did Whiskey start from? The Robert, uh, uh, Albert, Albert, Royal Robert uh, Hall or something like that. Mm. Robert, 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 Robert yes, Robert. thank you, Dennis. So, so it, it starts from there. He knew, again, I was talking to you about database. When he first announced the O2, he was able to sell a second and a third day, uh, a day just because they knew the database. They knew how many people we're trying to get tickets. Mm. So for instance, let me use Rapaholic. If we know that um, maybe the auditorium is 4,000, meanwhile, you realize that about 20,000 people are trying to get tickets. You can sell three days. Mm. And that's what they are working with, all right? How many people are first of all listening to your song and everything? So I believe in the artist growth. Start from somewhere, play the arena, uh, play the Hammersmith. There are numbers. That goes all the way before you cut to the you, you get to the twenty thousand. I know how the Nigerians did it before selling real tickets, all right. Mm. But it's not an op open discussion. Yeah, it's a discussion you understand? That we have now. So we leave it at that. But we shouldn't put, as I was saying, we shouldn't put pressure on pressure, our artists. Yeah. We should leave them. What medical have done is beautiful. That's what we should be talking about. Mm -hmm. And I always tell the media, let's craft this our artist as the biggest thing ever. Let's say I'm a foreigner. I come to the country. And I want to listen to the radio. Mm. The first presenter that I hear talking about some artists will let me take my phone and try to listen. Sure. If I tune in and the presenter says, this is the new song, this is the biggest song in Ghana right now, and it's Olive the Boy, you sold me somebody. Because mm. when I travel, the, the first thing I do, if somebody's playing on their iPhones, whatever, I tell them, no, I want to listen to the radio. I want to listen what's on the ground, what is playing there. You know, for me to get at least attached to whatever is happening on yeah. the ground. So that's it. If we make noise about artists and say, these are our 10 biggest artists, these are the 10 biggest songs in Ghana right now, and we keep to that, everybody, if you hear by the, the next time you hear like the second, third, you'll be sold. Mm. You also, the, the next time you're talking to somebody, you'll be sold and go like, oh, sure. this is the biggest song, this is the biggest artist. Thank you. Probably just the way you sat on TV here yeah, to talk about the maybe Kim Paluta. Mm. You understand? So that's where we go for. We should be, we are always watching our dirty little in public. Yeah. It's only Ghanaians that do that. Sure. Go to that. You think that they don't, the, the bloggers and the media don't deal with their artists in, in all, the, all these countries. That they deal with they them, do. but they don't put it in public. Sure. Yeah. They wouldn't write them for you to go and find out. Mm. You understand? Sometimes we don't know the, the effect of you Who's sitting, watching, yeah. yeah, you sitting at home and writing something on the, about the artists, you get to immigration, yeah. the first thing they do, they do is, oh, somebody tweeted about you and said that you were going to kill somebody or something like yeah. that. They put you on the side. Yeah. Wow. And it's serious, it's serious like that. Sure. So these are some of the things that we have to take in granted, like, you know. All right. Thank you very much, DJ Mesa. Thank you very much, Nabil. Thank mm -hmm. you very much, Dennis. I mean, it's been a very, very informative uh, conversation right here on the chat. I've enjoyed it so much. And I mean... Like, let's, let's down our expectations. I mean, Ghanaians, let's down our expectations. Let's celebrate our acts when they do very, very well. Kim Promise right now is in Canada 
doing it massive there. He recently went to Asia and all of that. He has a database. He knows where his market is, and you'll be able to enter all these places. So I feel like if you're a young art out there, see where your music is selling. Where are people listening to your music? Enter into those spots. You don't necessarily have to sell the big artists before you be an established um, artist. Sell the small artists, the small events, the small spaces. It's going to take you forward.